I despise the guy as an arm wrestler. Uh, so uh, uh, it pisses me off for him to fucking touch my hand. <laughs> All right, guys, in the Monster Factory, Don Hollywood Underwood. We're about to do a little Q&A with some questions that you guys ask. We have no idea where this is going to go. We're going to let it ride. Check this thing out. Don't forget to subscribe. Click the bell for notifications. A question from Luke Yeet. Y-E-E-T. Yo, Luke. 30, what up? 33 people like this question, so 33 people want to know. This is very interesting. Why did you false start so many times? against Travis. He was much his first hit, he was awake. And he Wait. cheated in false start too. Don't move there. And he got, oh, oh, oh. Yes, the yes. Goal. Jump the goal. That's a foul, right? In this the first jump start, a warning. Don't move there. Two would be a foul, must be careful. One foul. I've, I've arm wrestled Travis Bajan probably 150 times. He is so lying. They've arm wrestled uh, like seven times. Travis seven. always false starts. So more than likely the answer to that question legitimately is because He's doing it. I'm going to beat him to the punch. Um, he always said he was the fastest. He wasn't even close to as fast as I was. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, my twitch is there. I'm always reading a ref. Uh, you know, one thing, if you're trying to be a hitter, and you know this, watching a ref, learning the cadence, doing this and that, uh, they, uh, from time to time, and when that comes out, I mean, I, I probably just thought they were saying ready to go. Just join him on faster, so, yeah, just – what warnings are for, and I use every single one of them every time. Except in WAL, they're a foul. Yeah, but you get three fouls, so it's all. <coughs> yeah, yeah. So, what do you think, Michael? You think he's just anticipating, or he's trying to go first? I think him and Travis both cheat. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, I mean Woody's fast. People yeah, that have never pulled him don't know how fast he is, and so him and uh, Travis both are, you know, commonly false start because they're anticipating the hit. So. Absolutely. Yeah, I, so yeah, anticipation. Yeah, I can remember when we were getting you ready for 2017 finals. Done. Close your hands. Go! Done. Close your hands. Go! Close your hands. Go! Close your hands. Go! If you're not false starting, you're not starting, basically. So I can remember working on getting you to go fast because you're always like hanging back, catching. We wanted you to hit. I think yeah. that's important. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that makes um, a huge difference in any match, especially with the force and power that, that generated off the go. Well, if you look at that European speed, okay, and Daniel Moser is another good one. How often is a false start really caught? Dude, I don't even catch his elbow fouls when I'm repping. Right. And then I see him in slow-mo afterwards, and people send me videos on it. Dude, I couldn't see that shit. It happened so fast. And most refs can't, especially when you're really, really fast. I mean, it's like in Reno. Wait till you see the footage from us arm wrestling last night. I had no idea this dude was fouling 14 I, feet. This is 14 all, foot listen, elbow foul. He it's is, crazy. They will have already seen it when they Oh, well, first shit. Well, y'all yeah. have already seen it. <laughs> Anyways, he's got all that special <laughs> editing equipment to make things not... CGI and whatever, Michael Todd. <laughs> this one is coming from Nikolai Assen. Nikolai is an A A S E N. This is about where your nicknames come from. Okay. Why are you called Hollywood? Because I'm a pain in the ass and I make a lot of racket and I need to be seen, or I used to be. Um, I, my nickname is Woody. Uh, went by Woody for years. Mike calls me Woody and a few other. I still call him Woody because that's who I know him as, right? right? Uh, Hollywood, Don Underwood, Woody. Uh, uh, it actually was given to me by Denise Waddles. Um, Woody, Hollywood, because I was always you know, just you know, looking back, uh, being a young kid, needing attention. I didn't get enough as a kid, apparently. Uh, would do things. Plus, I was a professional wrestler, and I brought that persona to the table on the stage and I believe that entertainment is what this sport was lacking uh, tournament arm wrestling uh, eight hours later uh, still, uh, you understand if you're not involved in this you're not going to sit at a venue for 
13 hours and watch people <laughs> are wrestler. You want to see the, the money shot. You want to see the ending scene. And uh, so I thought, you know what, let's make this entertaining. And through the yelling, screaming, and making an ass out of myself, um, they coined me Hollywood, and I, I think I deserve it. So I'm going to run with it now, and uh, it, it's a lot of fun being that guy. But ultimately, we're just regular old human beings. Regular old human beings. Except for this guy. He's a monster. And where does right, monster so. come from? Because we've had some people comment, why do you call yourself monster? Yeah, exactly. I never called myself monster. Uh, Neil Pickup, 2006. Circus Circus is where we're staying at. We're sharing a room before the NAL at the Olympia. <laughs> and I first time he had seen me that big, I was 250 pounds, and I had abs and I was pretty fit and he was on the phone with someone from the UK and I came out of the shower and I told you you guys were in a room together he called you monster exactly I'm sorry you know now, uh, so I walk out <laughs> and uh, he's on the phone he's like oh my god Michael Todd's a monster because I just had a towel around my waist and my, I was pretty jacked up looking the next day he announced me as monster Michael Todd and it's, it's stuck it's been there ever since so everyone in every promotion ever has called you Monster Michael Todd. Since 2006. Yeah, even PAL. I remember they had a big lights, yeah. Monster Return. Yeah. You know, so uh, Michael Todd yeah. has not called himself Did Monster. But that is who he is. Monster he's Michael, Michael Todd. Michael. That is he's your definitely brand. Yeah, I used to be much more of a pretty boy. <laughs> now, uh, no, wait, 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 the Monster kind of makes let's sense. Just, let's just stop right there a second, since we're talking about pretty boy. I believe it was uh, a trip from I don't know where to St. Joe, Missouri. We coined ourselves Band Brothers Incorporated. Band Brothers Incorporated. And and well, that trip was coming from Harker Heights through Texas. Little Rock, and then we went to St. Joe, and, and on the way to St. Joe. And I believe we coined some nicknames, that we made some shirts, and you I were- remember, What was my nickname? Michael. The Greek, Greek God, God Todd. <laughs> <laughs> what was, was I? It. What was I? Uh, I have no idea. I think I was just Don Underwood. <laughs> Could have been Woody. Don Woody Underwood. Uh, you know, been. I've seen statues of the Greek gods. The Did Greek you ever God. notice they have little, little, little bitty penises? Little penises? That's why they Is that what you said? Monster. <laughs> you know better. <laughs> I, I do too. And she ain't <laughs> Yeah, Greek God Todd, because uh, but the thing is about you was pretty some bitch, uh, well, especially when he was all chiseled. But the funny thing is, is when you got when you became Fat Michael Todd, it wasn't yeah, it wasn't it was pretty. the Greek Dodd. <laughs> yeah, so I, I forgot about those shirts. I still have my shirt somewhere. Um, I use mine. As I thought about time. burning it because you know you covered up your tattoo. <clears throat> I didn't cover it up. I shaded over it because it was too light. <laughs> you can still For see those it from of you who don't know, angles. they had Bam Brothers tattoos. It yeah, was and true. it was bam, get woo, some. get woo. Some. That was it. In so that uh, order. all that it started was, on the way to St. Joe. Now St. Joe in 1996 bam. was cold as a mother. Like it was like 40 below windshield. Remember we got stuck on the side of the road, and the diesels were coming by, and the the car would shake. We was in a blizzard. Is that when I was tapping on the windows and more soup, more soup. <laughs> Or is that the, that was Oliver. I'm sorry, that was a movie. <laughs> From 12 Gauge Mage. 12, 12 Gauge Mage. How, How about that? that? 12 Gauge <laughs> Mage. Mage. <laughs> Put a miss, mister. Yeah. All right, here's a question. Are you planning a comeback? And given the choice, who would you like to pull most? Well, Ooh. don't call it a comeback. Uh, you know, it's... Comeback is is something that's very difficult to do. I, I I don't know if you guys know the age. You know, arm wrestling. I don't think there's an age limit. But the older you get, the tougher it is to make a run at the top. Uh, yeah. Do I want to be something that people talk about in this in the conversation when arm wrestling comes up? Sure. Uh, I don't know if I can at, at this age. I'm gonna do my best. Uh, collaborating with this guy and a few others. Um, I, I, I've run into some walls as we was talking about. Yeah. Um, and figuring out technique, uh, training with, I'm talking about not elite. These are guys that we can grab and do anything we want at any given time. And it gets you to a... a it creates bad it. habits. Very bad. Um, you're allowing, you're catching, you're pulling from angles that you normally wouldn't be ideal to pull from in a match. But it gets you comfortable in those spots. 
because of that comfortability, you no longer have your ace that you depended on so much because you don't you don't get a chance to use it. Just like last night, I was saying I want to be able to hit. You know, I want to be able to hit because I don't get to hit very often. And so when you're practicing and you're the top guy, with the exception of using bands along with the the opponent. Uh, you, you rarely get to hit, and it does create bad habits. So what I'm trying to say is, is training with guys that you, you are, are, are much stronger than, you've got to figure out a way to get stronger through them. And that's difficult to do, and it also creates bad habits and lanes that you're going to use in a tournament whether you whether you know it or not. Um, and it, and it, you're not using what your strengths are because there's no reason to just crush a guy that doesn't have a chance. Does that make sense? No, absolutely. Um, and that's what happens. I mean, it's what happens. That's why when Corey and I started training together, oftentimes our pulling sessions were me pulling Corey with bands. Yeah. So that I was able to to pull someone that would be because the bands the first. What do you five, think about that? I mean, is that something you swear by? One hundred percent. Okay. One hundred percent. And because the thing is that the way your arm and stuff will pump up if you pull Bo or whoever else five to ten matches using a band and them. After five or ten matches, you're pumped up enough to where the, you can take the band off, and you might still get to have some good matches and yeah. still be getting to go full force. But you got to have to that, that edge taken off with the band. Yeah. It really does help. Um, so the question is, who, you, do, you, who you, do you want? Go ahead. You can hit full force, and do, are, you, are you able to do what you normally do? Mm -hmm. I've never used a band. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah, hundred percent. I mean, because uh, you have that extra pressure, and it actually has that extra pressure from the setup because. You take the band and you pull it to the center, so now you're actually having an extra right, right. loading pressure that you have to deal with because right. it's trying to open you back up. Right. So you have that plus the opponent, plus the hit, plus the, you know, so you're just getting fatigued sitting here holding, right. waiting for the match to start. Which, so it, it will bleed which is it. something that... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really good. But who, who do you want your opponent to be? If, if you are planning a comeback, who would you like to arm wrestle most? That was the second part of the question. <sighs> That's... I don't like Devin. See, I figured Devin's who he's going to say. I figured it Devin I, would be the I guy. don't like – I'd like him off the table when he's not talking about the world that he thinks he fucking resides over like a puppet master, which that's that's my problem with Devin. Uh, nice guy, but an arrogant – just an arrogant – oh, anyway, you know who I'm talking about, Devin. Um, I, I mean, outside of talking to a good guy, you start talking arm wrestling, he's just such full of shit, man. You, you know <laughs> – and I, I don't care. I mean, like I said, I mean, I'm not afraid of anybody in the world. Not that I need to be afraid of Devin. But if I'm going to pull somebody and I am trained, um, I know where I want to go. And that would be my first choice. Uh, Devin or Travis. Travis is not training, so that wouldn't. So you're saying someone that's going to get you hyped up, focused. And like somebody that's actually, I'm not going to do it and do all this training for someone that, is a 20th ranked arm wrestler, and there's no right. point in it. Uh, but back to the question, I always enjoy pulling Devin because I don't like him on the table. Yeah. Uh, I despise the guy as an arm wrestler. Uh, so I, I, it pisses me off for him to fucking touch my hand. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And when you piss me off, I'm that much stronger. And uh, yeah. Devin, there you go. I That's love the pulling match. Devin. How's your record with Tim Bresnan? I fuck suck against him. <laughs> yeah, I suck against yeah. him. No, you have not I, had a good record against no, him. No, fuck. Tim. The one time I beat Tim, Tim and I actually had a conversation. He's like, "Don, I'm wore out, man. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna lay down. I don't have anything for you." I'm like, "Okay, yeah, all right." Tim, ah, I'm just like, ah, ah. ah. <laughs> so then, <laughs> chatty chat, Don Hollywood. Yeah, I beat Tim. I beat Tim. I beat Tim. Well, Tim didn't like that. Tim actually went out in the street and won to fight me. I'm like, oh. <laughs> I said, and I liked him. I really, genuinely liked the guy. I said, nah, I ain't gonna fight you. I knew that I was being an asshole, yeah. and I really didn't want. And if he wouldn't kick me in the head either, I heard he got a pretty fast leg. Yeah, I've heard that. But either way, love you, Tim. Yeah, very. He's my worst opponent. I hate pulling that guy. Yeah, for some reason, your top row just falls right into his top row, and you—it's weird. I had him that close to the pad a couple times, and you come right. And, I, and it's my own fault. For resetting with him instead of staying driven in the move. Um, I watch that match a lot, man. And he'll take it out of me. He's so freaking strong. Yeah, Tim's, Tim's a rough one. Uh, he's definitely someone I don't want to see on the table ever. So come back and Devin Laird. That's what we got out of this. <laughs> what happened between you and Tom Nelson that made the match get so heated?